Sisters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look what we have going on today. Uh, we are slightly down a little bit right now in the ES Mini, trading down 0.76%. to around 5,255. The Russell off about 2%. At two thousand seventy-seven eighty cents, the NQs eighteen thousand three hundred three dollars fifty cents. Again, down slightly. You know, we're just down slightly today, a little bit. Um, we have some things that might be dragging into that. Obviously, Tesla uh, did not do so well. We can see they're down about five point three percent today. Uh, the Dow futures off about one percentage. The gold contract trading up right now, still at one point six four, and really the winner of the day here in the metals is uh, silver. Uh, doing quite well. That also pours into, of course, mag silver. Take a look at that. Will be uh, one that we cover in the gold report. Or Tom O'Brien covers. And we have a 22-year anniversary special deal. We save about 41.65 a month, and that's for the uh, duration of your subscription. So however, however long you subscribe to it. Regardless, mag is up about 4.5 percent today. Leaf report Mac Moran is doing all right as well about 2.48 percent currently so these miners are coming up uh the base metals themselves the contracts are doing quite well uh copper still at 407 uh, but still a positive move of course it'd be interesting to see if we can test the high reserve about 416 crude what is there to say we are up now um 85 last time this was happening was about october and of course we enjoyed some pretty low uh, energy prices since then uh, Saudi Arabia, in particular, OPEC as a whole, uh, are cutting production. Um, and, you know, that will affect us at the pump. Of course, we're going to start drilling the Permian Basin. We've spoken about that a little bit on the show. Uh, but to when that's going to really show, I'm not sure. Uh, however, I think going forward, you know, again, I talk about the CPI and the energy with CPI. Uh, of course, higher oil prices are going to lead to a higher CPI. Uh, that's not going to be the core, uh, of course. But I think this will still, uh, excuse me, affect it some ways. And so we'll have to wait to see what happens with that. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla. Okay. We're down 5.34% today. We have a lot to talk about with it, you know, especially, you know, looking at Xiaomi. Okay. And that's one of their major uh, competitors in China. So let's take a look. Tesla shares sink after sales fall more than expected in first quarter. Group manages to reclaim Crown as the world's largest seller of battery electric cars after a big drop in shipments from BYD. Still, this is kind of a commentary on the entire EV market. Uh, Tesla reported a bigger than expected drop in its quarterly deliveries in the first three months of the year, setting its shares down more than 5%. The company posted sales of 386,000, uh, you know, roughly 800 cars. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, that is down from 484,000, 50 sold in the fourth quarter of last year, and lower than 422,875, still, you know, decent numbers. Uh, it is uh, expected to sell about 450,000 vehicles in the most recent quarter. Of course, they were pretty shy of that. Uh, the, later, the latest delivery numbers still allow Tesla to reclaim the crown, as this article is saying, from BYD. BYD, okay, still doing pretty well, but if we can pull this up here... Where's my mouse? There we go. No, that gives us Boyd. I don't know what I would look up on here for that. Anyways, uh, they, they fell, <laughs> their shipments fell about 42%, uh, which is pretty nuts. Um, we can talk a little bit more in this realm. We can look at Rivian. Let's 
take a look today. So down equally, again, this, uh, this whole EV market, uh, I think, is in some trouble with it. Uh, however, the deliveries have increased about 70%. Uh, the vehicle deliveries in Q1 totaled 13,588, while it produced 13,980. Uh, it also reaffirmed the previous guidance of producing 57,000 vehicles. And these are slick looking vehicles. Uh, I've seen a few of them on the roads here in St. Pete. They're very nice. Head of Tuesday's release, analysts expect Riven to deliver 13,000 units on Q1. Uh, so they, they beat that. Uh, again, I think the major issue is just going to be a decrease in demand uh, for electric vehicles going forward. Uh, it's it's weird though because you're you're also seeing, I would say, some commentary too, uh, from what analysts are calling the middle class, and they're having a lot of confidence, right? Assuming inflation is going down, uh, saying that they're on the right track financially, and so it remains to be seen, you know, kind of how electric vehicles are going to fit in, I, I would suppose, to the economy, right? Uh, I think a lot of sales had to do with tax credits that people were getting. Uh, of course, you get kind of the cool factor of it. But I, I think it remains to be seen, you know, especially if we have higher interest rates for longer, right? And of course, the Fed will come down, you know, definitely not until June. I think one of the Fed chairs uh, just said that it's certainly not happening in May. I don't think anyone anticipated that. I think June's what we're looking at. But even so, you know, I, I don't, we're certainly not going to go back down to like quantitative easing levels of interest rates, of like, you know, near 0% and everything. Um, it, it'll just remain to be seen. Of course, we have a lot of investment going in to create more charging stations. Uh, okay, there it's back. And uh, that will kind of ease people into buying them. I, I, I still think it'll be a little bit of time with that. All right. We take a look at Humana. Okay, and a lot of these healthcare stocks are getting hit. Uh, and that's because Medicare Advantage is getting hit. Biden said they're not increasing uh, the amount spent on that. And all right, let's talk a little bit about that. This is the article. It says Medicare Advantage is overbilling Medicare by 22%. The body in question is called the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission or MedPAC. Uh, it is an independent authoritative body that advises Congress on Medicare. It was set up by the Balanced Budget Act 1997, back when people in Washington were actually, okay, whatever, that's political speech. <laughs> it just, just published its latest report to Congress entitled Medicare Payment Policy, and the key thing everyone needs to read, uh, guess what, page 25, which is how, okay, yeah. <laughs> what is up with the articles like this, right? Long story short, they're kind of overcharging on a lot of things. Biden is bringing that down, so you're getting a massive hit and things like Humana who are now going to have to pay a little bit more on that, especially in a time where inflation is kind of hitting medical costs. Okay, so we have Humana down about 12.65% today, which uh, is you know pretty intense. Uh, United Healthcare has also slid CVS. Let's take a look at CVS right now. Just waiting for this to load. It's fine. Let's keep looking at Humana while I read this a little bit. Uh, Humana shares while well, we have the break. We'll talk a little bit more about this just briefly when we come back. We also have Basil on today and then Tim Ord uh, on later. So stay tuned for that, folks. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. What is going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I want you to come on a journey with me if you look over here. I have a blank web page. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to type in to the URL there, right, tfnn.com, navigate right over to newsletters, and lo and behold, we have opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, Basil on March 19th, as you can see, just had a subscriber webinar. This is one of the coolest things about subscribing to Basil is he does subscriber webinars. They are free for all subscribers. He does them pretty often, I would say. So if you missed it, not to worry, we have all the archives uploaded. So you subscribe right now today. It's your first time, 30 day money back guarantee. For whatever reason, it doesn't agree with you. But you get access to all these webinars. You get access to daily analysis. It is fantastic. And indeed, we are with Basil Chapman right now. Basil, are you with us? I certainly am. Hi, how are you, Jacob? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Basil? I'm good, and thank you for saving the day this morning when uh, I get my <laughs> charts didn't post. You came along and you posted them for me. Thank you. Technology makes our lives easier, but sometimes it can make it a lot harder. So I'm glad well, we were able I, to get that out for you. So you know, it, it it is a pity because we actually I had some. Sometimes the timing is really important. This morning I had us. Uh, wanting to buy the uh, semiconductor three times short, a small position in that. And if my newsletter went out as I thought it had, quarter to eight this morning, we would have got this uh, particular instrument to $3.18 uh -huh. intraday. It ran all the way to the 330s. So, well, what can I say? We missed that, but it was just unfortunate. But the other things that have worked out very well. So, and, and that's SOX S, right? S O X S direction? Yes, SOXS. And that call. really is based on the SMHs. And the SMH, uh. let me just show you something here. So, the, so my, my theory has always been, number one, the, uh, the chip sector, that's the semiconductor sector, is the oil, the crude oil of the 1900s that mm -hmm. we had. This is now the crude oil of the 21st century. Everything now has chips. So it's really important because for a long time, I'm not talking about years, I'm talking about you know, almost decades, where the semiconductors have gone, basically that's where the market goes. And the semiconductors made an all-time high uh, on the 8th of March at 239.14. Pulled back, made a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology, pulled back to the 213 area, and then rallied and started to stall. And my contention is, I'll just show this chart if I can. Let me mm -hmm. just get this across here. 
There it is. Uh, that market basically has three core um, trends. One is where there's a straight line up or down. That's this green up, red down. Or it has a cup formation. It could be a V, but it's basically going from one point down and then back to that point. How it deals with that point when it gets back there is important. And an arch formation. So when it goes from a low, it goes to a high, it fails at a peak, A or a B, the first or second uh, peak, and then comes back and retests that left side low. That's a problem. So here's a combination of one and three. And you can see the semiconductors went straight down, ran up, made a little peak, failed, took it out, did it again, failed, took it out. That's what we call the dreaded H. And that means that if it takes out the left side low sharply, it can go a lot sharper. So that's the part, the patterns that we were talking about when I did my webinar. I said, if we're about to have a consolidation phase coming into April, uh, the pattern that we need to look at would be this H pattern. Mm -hmm. And here we've got the same large arch formation where we've gone to this peak B, that's the second highest peak from that low. And we'll see, because at this particular point, it's still good. The nine period moving average is over the 14. That's just a faint, I call it the indicator of last resort. It's the one that really takes a long time to fail, can keep you in a position much longer than you anticipated. So here we've got the semiconductors about to turn down, hasn't yet crossed negative, but I'm watching because I think that'll be important. Now, what's really uh, fascinating here is if we go to the Dow, and here we do have the Dow as a short, we have long-term positions, um, long-term that we're not touching in the Dow diamonds. That's, that's the long position of the Dow. But on a short-term basis, we are short, and that so far is working. But even here, you can see this. I wonder if I can do this. I'll do this right here. This, or, or the chart on the right, this is the price of the of the Dow. Let me just change that to the Dow. I dollar I N D U. And this is the price right now. You can see we've had so many of these gray. This is the price of the Dow, the big thick gray line. Gray line coming down, and yet that nine period moving average, even in that mid uh, <clears throat> that early was a January sharp pullback. That green line did not turn pink. When it turns pink you can see the market's going to head quite a bit lower. Mm -hmm. So I've been watching this very closely, and, and that's kind of the benchmark for me right now, whether or not we're having just a digestive phase or whether it's going to become a deeper uh, consolidation. So that's where we are. So we are short the Dow, working out fine right now. Um, we've also had a number of uh, positions that have reached all-time highs or yearly highs over the last two weeks. So I said, we've got to be careful here. We've got profits. We started to take profits off. And we started to look at what, what are the ingredients for a market to go down sharper than just a consolidation. And one of them is the yield. So I'll go show you the TLT. <clears throat> Pull back very sharply. Took out the low of February of 92.01. This is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Mm -hmm. It went under it today. And you can see we're making in the weekly chart. This is the daily chart on the left, the weekly chart in the middle, monthly chart on the right. And you can see we're making lower lows and high, lower highs. So far, this is still within the parameters we've seen for, for some time. But if the yields go much higher, in other words, if the TLT starts to take out 90 as a support level in April, I think then we have an ingredient for a, a steeper decline. But right. so far, this is kind of, Kind of what you would expect my, based on my daily charts, because the weekly charts are all strong. And that's going to be something very interesting, uh, because we've seen a rotation from the uh, Magnificent 7, maybe Magnificent 4 now. And that's include Microsoft. Microsoft made an all-time high just uh, the other day on the 24th of March at 430.82. And it's still holding, we're actually long from the 338 level. Um, but the weekly chart is still only a leg C in the Shaven Wave methodology. It's that fourth highest peak, peak D. You can see we made one right there back in uh, July of last year. We pulled back from 366 down to the low 300s. So, so far, the weekly charts in the Dow, uh, I'll show you this here. Let me just go to it. In the Dow, still strong, leg C. Uh, it's actually a peak C, so it should go to a D. Um, and we can go through the different... Uh, uh, weekly chart. So I'm looking at this one step at a time, and that's the daily chart. You can see we held the inside track propellant zone. This is that green, pink, narrow uh, rising 
trend line here. It's a little channel. Held it so far today, and we'll see if it takes it out. If the Dow starts to close under 39,000, I think that's going to be a problem. So there are certain areas that are still acting very well. For instance, we have a, a rig, which is rig is the Transocean Limited Offshore Drilling Oil and Gas. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, crude oil prices are going higher. Yeah. So we've got this, and it's doing very nicely, and I think that's... So there are areas, regardless of whether there's a digestive phase, let's call it the, the tech sector or the semiconductors, I think there are a lot of areas that are actually doing quite well. So we try to ride those, and I like to have price levels, single digits, double digits, for, or triple digits for subscribers who want different pricing for what they would like to buy. Absolutely. And Basil, again, congrats on that call with SOXS, doing fantastic today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Jake. Take care now, Basil. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Again, we were just with Basil Chapman of the opening call newsletter. We went through that. Now we're going to do another journey. 
We're gonna go open a new tab and I'm gonna type in something called the ord-oracle.com. And this is with our friend, Tim Ord. Check it out, guys. This is a fantastic letter as well. We are with Tim every Tuesday and Thursday. Usually Tom is with it. Now Tim has been calling this thing in the gold market for quite a while. I mean, look at that. Remember, you would hear me talk about how nothing was happening in gold and I didn't like it. I didn't see what was going on. And Tim and Tom were like, no, 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 no. We've been in this way longer and check this thing out. Anyways, fantastic analysis. And we were happy to have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on with us today. Tim, are you there? I'm here. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, it's good to talk uh, to you. Yeah, I haven't talked so, to you since all this started happening in gold, so I'm interested to see what you got for us today. Yeah, it's it's we're looking. You got to really look at the bigger time frames, and it, it tells a pretty good story. You know, we kind of um, there was a bunch of signal or not bunch, but we started getting actually uh, uh, bully signals actually last July, and they they really didn't go up, but they didn't go down, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. But anyhow, let's look at the bigger picture. We'll talk about the short term picture a little bit later. But the first chart, uh, this chart, uh, uh, chart number one, yep. goes back to uh, like 1994. And the middle window is the XAU gold ratio. And this is a monthly chart. And we're going to look, uh, I think chart number three simplifies this chart. But anyhow, we'll start off with this chart. But anyhow, I drew trend lines on this XAU gold chart. In a nutshell, when the XAU ratio is going up, that means uh, – the XAU, which is a gold index, is outperforming gold. And that's what happens in bull markets. Uh, some of the big bull markets of the 1980s, that ratio is going up. And in general, this ratio has been going down since about 1994. But there's you know, blips up uh, from like roughly about 2000 to 2009. It went up, not a lot, but it did go up and went down. And since 2014, more or less, we've been going sideways uh, on this ratio. Uh, but what I really want to point out, I drew two blue lines on this chart. Uh, the top blue line goes all the way back uh, to 1995, approximately, and connecting the highs. And the bottom line goes back to about 1994, connecting the lows. And uh, what I really want to concentrate on is a blue one uh, that's connecting the highs from the 1994 highs. Right. We've been basically banging against that trend line, that downtrend line, since about mid-2020. We haven't broke through it yet, but it's not backing away from it. So, we're, in my opinion, uh, since mid-2021, we're building energy to pop through that line. Now, this line goes back to 1994, so that's a 20-year was that 20 years? No, that's a 30-year trend line, <laughs> uh, right? So it's, you know, the bigger the trend line, the more right. meaningful to move after. So you got a 30-year trend line here. We're about ready to break. I think we're going to break, you know, probably fairly soon. Well, I hadn't broke it yet. But uh, this would change the character of the market going forward probably for multi-years. So it's a pretty big deal, Um you know, where's where's that ratio going to go? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we break that trend line, normally the longer the trend line, when you do break it, it, it is a significant um, happening, I guess you might say. Right. And normally also when you break a trend line, you need a sign of strength. So what that says, if we do break that trend line, which I think we will because we've got different buy signals that um, – we got on the weekly, the monthly, and actually the daily on the XAU and other uh, gold indexes. We'll probably see a sign of strength through that trend line. So what I'm saying is even though the gold market has been strong over the last actually just month, we actually is probably going to get stronger because of this ratio. Once that ratio turns up, it will probably turn up with a sign of strength because that's what needs to happen to break a trend line. So um, – Minimum where it's going to go is probably, um, if you look back from, uh, I don't know, 2012 to two, the current time frame, mm -hmm. I drew a, uh, a blue trend horizontal line across there connecting the highs. I think minimum we go back to that trend line. I see. And uh, right now that ratio is 0 .5, 0 .057. Uh, to get back to that blue trend line, the horizontal trend line looks like about, 0.09 to 
give or take. So if gold stocks, what that says is gold stocks without, if the ratio goes back to, I say, 0.09, that's about a 40, or no, that's about a, oh, let's see, do, do my math here in my head. It's probably about a 70, 80% move in that ratio. That means that on average, gold stocks will move about 70, 80%. Hmm. So that's that's just moving that ratio. Yeah. And some other gold stocks will out will outperform that. Sure. But in general, if a gold if a gold ratio is said to say at a nickel, which a lot of them are, it'll move back to you know about nine cents, um, just just because of this ratio. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, it's, it's something really important. Have we broke that ratio yet or that trend line yet? Not yet. So let's flip to chart two. Yeah. Okay, now this kind of narrows it down. This uh, dotted red trend line coming down from the top of the chart is where that trend line is on a short-term basis. Uh, so, and it, uh, um, so anyhow, so you can see a short-term view. Uh, anyhow, the, the middle window is the weekly XAU gold ratio, and the window above that is the RSI for that ratio. And the blue lines on this chart show the times when the RSI of this ratio got below 30 and turned up, which is a buy signal. So we got a buy signal here, probably looks like about February of this year, maybe, you know, maybe in the end of February, 1st of March. It's a fairly new uh, buy signal. Most of them last around six months or longer. Uh, so, but we're, we're getting close to that, that down trend line. It looks like uh, to break that trend line, we need a close above uh, about 0.06. That, um, horizontal trend line I had drawn on the chart of, uh, before is around 0.09. So at a minimum, we should move back to 0.07. Uh, that's what has happened in the past. But if we do it this time around, we'll break that trend line going back to 1994. So I doubt we'll stop at 0.07. We'll go some way higher number. Um, how high it is, I don't know. But all this stuff is happening right now. To get this type of setup on this bigger time frame, uh, you know, you, you don't, it doesn't happen very often. It happens once every couple of decades. And we're ending into this period right now where this may happen. Last time something this big was going on was probably back in 2020 or 2000 even uh i hear the music yeah tim this is awesome stay stay with us because uh we'll get back to this folks stay tuned we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are currently with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you there with us still? Yep, yep. Okay. That's, Fantastic. Let's start on two. Yep. Um, the bottom window is the XAU, and I have a, a, a line drawn on the connecting the highs on the XAU right against that trend line right now. And uh, again, we're on a bicycle because of the RSI of the weekly uh, um, weekly XAU gold ratio gave a bicycle here, I think February or March recently. Previous bicycles at, a, at, a, at this type of signal lasted a minimum of six months. So we're still early in that signal, so most likely we're going to bust through that blue trend line I have drawn on the XAU, which also suggests, again, when you break a trend line, you should see a sign of strength. That confirms the break. So XAU, in my opinion, will get stronger here in the coming weeks as it breaks that trend line. Also, we're going to have another, you know, the XAU gold ratio right above it. Breaking that trend line, you should see a sign of strength. That's the reason why uh, uh, these gold stocks, I think, in are really going to turn the corner probably pretty strongly here in the coming weeks. Let's go to chart three. Yes. If you can. Give me one right. second. I'm trying to get it loaded up. All right. All right. We are good to go. All right. Good to go. Okay. This is just a line chart. The other charts were kind of messy, but the middle window is a monthly XAU chart. You can see the top trend line I've drawn down back uh, from the 2000 or 1996 high is down to where it is. You can see a little bit better that ratio. I got circled in red there, just right at that trend line. And we're on a buy signal because of, of a six-month buy signal on the RSI XAU gold ratio. So either this this uh, XAU ratio bakes above the red line or goes below the blue line. Well, it's not going to go blue line because we're on a buy signal, so that means the ratio is going to go up. So anyhow, we're going to bust that ratio. The bottom window is the monthly gold, which already had a breakout. We broke above the neckline of head and shoulders bottom. Uh, so as of right now, the gold stocks, per se, have not broke out yet, but that's probably coming here pretty quick. So but anyhow, I wanted to show you on the bigger time frames where we are. So if you go break below on that red trend line coming mm -hmm. back down from the 1996 highs, you should rally back at least. I have uh, blue lines drawn on the XAU gold chart there. Uh, we'll probably get back to at least the top trend line at minimum, which is around 1. And again, we're 0 0.057. So, you know, you're looking for a 90% move in the gold stocks. Um, you know, probably, I don't know, what would happen this year? I don't know. I really don't have a time frame, but soon. Oh, so let's flip to chart 4. Yeah. Uh, unless you have a question about no, chart no, no. Three. I'm, I'm just, I'm listening. This is awesome stuff. All right, chart four. You know, this is a little. You got the same thing. You got the monthly. The middle window is a monthly XAU gold chart going back to 1984. Looks like, and the bottom window, it's just a little bit different method, but it just kind of like reconfirms what's going on. But the bottom method, going back to 1984, is the slow stochastics. And slow stochastics is picked out every 
uh, bull market bottom going back to 1984. There was one failure back in 2012. Uh, you can see a little line there. I have failed on that slow stochastic chart. But anyhow, back in uh, mid-2022, which I August of 2022, I thought that was an important low. I thought that low was not going to be broken. And one of the reasons why, because of this momentum chart. Now, I got some other indicators said that August 2000, or actually July 2022, uh, I got another one, August 2022, uh, September 2022, different type of signals that all came in at that low of, of uh, late 2022. So I'm thinking that's a low. Market popped up a little bit, and stochastics kind of just went sideways. Uh, it's down a little bit. But if you notice, once you hit below minus 20, in all cases, you went back above plus 80. <laughs> so what this chart says to me, we're early in the stages of this bull market. So I think the bull market really started in 2022. And some of the, you know, most gold stocks haven't done well yet. Right. The reason why you need this ratio, which is the monthly XAU ratio, to start going up. That means all gold stocks are starting to participate, not just uh, probably the generals are coming off the bottom first. Then uh, everything will be starting coming off the bottom here later. But when this ratio gets back up to plus 80, uh, air, you know, it looks like about plus 90 are times when you get consolidations, you know, big consolidations. So we're, we're a long ways from that. You know, how long would that take to get up there? At a minimum, if the rally's starting right now, at a minimum, it would take a year to get back to that ratio. That doesn't mean that's the end of the bull market. It does mean that you could probably get a multi-month consolidation phases. So I'm thinking we're looking like if you look at 2000 low at the bottom window on the uh, slow stochastics, we kind of turned up pretty quickly. But every time we got to 80 there or around 80, you know, you got a multi-month consolidation and you kept going higher. So I'm thinking we may look something like that. We get to 80, we consolidate for several months and you start going up again. Uh, the reason why, because we're breaking that trend line back to 1996 high, you're breaking that, and that means a multi-year um, change of character in the market is happening. So instead of a, a downtrending market and the XAU gold ratio, you may have another 10 years of uptrending or something similar to right. that. Um, you know, be a multi-year, I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see down the road. But this momentum chart, this is turned up. we kind of gone sideways here. We're probably in the midst of turning up uh, right now. So let's, let's flip to chart five. I don't know if we'll be able to get through all these charts. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to pull up chart five right now. We are up. Perfect. All right. This is a monthly uh, middle windows XEU uh, monthly chart. Top window is the uh, monthly cumulative up-down volume in the bottom window is a uh, monthly cumulative advanced decline. Now these give, they don't catch the bottom and they don't catch the top, but they give the, this type of chart gets the 80% in between. So it hasn't closed above. To get the signal, you need both those charts, the top chart and the bottom chart, to close above the mid Bollinger Band. And it gave a sell signal back in 2021 and it's still been on a sell signal because we hadn't closed above the mid-Bollinger band. So this is a momentum chart of the advanced decline and up-down volume. So this is the meat of the rally. Once these things, once these two indicators get above their mid-Bollinger band, they don't whip around above it and below it. They either stay above it multi-months or they stay below it multi-months. And, and in this case, we gave a sell signal in 2021. We haven't turned up yet. I need to close above the mid boulder band. It doesn't predict, you know, the bond's probably in in August of 2022, but, you know, we've kind of been in a consolidation phase, but the strongest part of the rally comes when both those indicators close above the mid Bollinger band. That hasn't happened yet, but we're awful close. You know, if we bust through the middle window is the XAU gold chart again. We bust through that tr red trend line there with a sign of strength. Both those uh, uh, charts will probably bump, uh, bump, uh, jump above the mid Bollinger band. Fantastic. T so Tim, I thank you so music. much for joining us. I know we didn't get through all the charts, but come back Thursday. 
I think Tom will be here. I, I, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about this. So, All right. Tim, Talk thank you, you so much. Folks, stay right there. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, guys. Jacob Shoup. Filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were just with Tim Ward of the Ord Oracle. That's Ord-Oracle.com. We didn't get to go through all the charts, but... Regardless, I mean, that's some major insight. And while some of those moves seem extreme, again, keep in mind that gold was doing nothing for so long. And we're now having this impressive rally in it. I mean, some of the equities, I, I showed them yesterday, um, some of the equities that we had in the gold report, that Tom had in the gold report, uh, were, I mean, they're doing so well, right? And again, I just want to we'll plug this again because it's so good. I helped two people today do it. Um, we had so many more sign up, but it's 22 year anniversary for Tom O'Brien's gold report. When you're checking out, you just hit subscribe. You go here, select the monthly, and you're literally just going to type in 22 years right here. That's all you have to do. Hit add code. If you already have an account, like you already buy some of those, don't fill this in. Click right here. Again, if you have any questions on this and you don't know what to do, you just email me at jacob at tfnn.com and I will be more than happy to help you. Anyways, fantastic stuff. I know our producer is going to clip that afterwards and put it up. Really recommend looking at it. Okay, so what are we looking at right now, right before the close? Well, the ES Mini is still down about 0.67%. The Russell is still off doing Russell things at 1.84%. Uh, the Dow futures down nine, excuse me, 0.92 percent. Not some movements. Uh, in a positive way, I would suppose, kind of a red day, except in the metals. 
Disney, of course, doing its thing. Meta doing its thing. Steel Dynamics, uh, we're down about 140. We're, well, we're down to 147.88 off about 1%. And really, one of the things I want to put into perspective here is the dollar, right? I mean, this dollar is still pretty high. I mean, we were at, I think, a few months ago, around 107. My charts aren't loading. There we go. Um, that is not the chart for the dollar. Regardless, we're at 104.78, and this market is still, you know, Dude, okay, obviously, yeah, this is kind of a pullback, right? But, I mean, this is a market that wants higher price. No doubt about it. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. It was fantastic. Tom will be back tomorrow. Uh, however, we're starting off the day with Tommy O'Brien at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Then we go to Basil, the opening call. Steve Rhodes, then we have Larry, and then Tom will be on. Folks, have a great rest of your evening. We'll see you then.